The parish actually was established, I believe it was 1945, it could have been 44. It really came into fruition right after the Second World War. But then when they came to build the church, the parish had progressed to the point where there was over a thousand families belonging to the parish. So what they had designed was too small. So then they went to see Etienne Gabriel, the architect for this building, and they designed the building. And this was built 67, 68. It opened in the fall of 68. The exact cost of the contract was $397,000 plus the 64. I don't know what the 64 was, but <laughs> that was the contract. Uh, Etienne Gabry is by far one of our better known Canadian architects. Not only did he design this church, uh, he designed uh, the, uh, the basilica after it burnt down, St. Malthus Cathedral. So he's a well-known architect and uh, quite uh, ahead of his time. Well, a lot of people call it the TP church. Let's start there. And while it does reflect, uh, there's a lot of Métis people in our parish. So it, uh, it reflects some Aboriginal roots. That's quite true. Uh, but there's more to it than that. Uh, for instance, it's a perfect cone. If you're inside of it, like we're speaking now, and if you were standing on the far side, people could hear you because a cone, when you speak inside of a cone, it's probably one of the best uh, situations for your voice to carry and so on. There's that, so that for acoustics, the acoustics in this building are tremendous. Uh, then you look at the design of the church and especially more, well from inside too, you look at the, there seems to be a twist in the building, if you will. Uh, just imagine a campfire, for instance, with the flames going up. We use incense in a lot of our rites and so on. And so when the incense rises, the intent of in incense is it carries our, our prayers up to the Lord. So that if you look at the structure of the church and the way it goes up, it, it's the flame of our, our intense belief in our religion. So it's our prayers that are being carried up to the good Lord. So. So there's more to the intent of just saying, well, it's a teepee church. If you look at it, it uses a lot of natural products. The, the whole of the church really, other than its foundation, which is cement and mortar and bricks and so on, fine, they're Manitoba bricks, supplied by all SIP brick company, but if you look at the rest of it, it's cedar. And the cedar is really a natural. I believe there's a, a finish on it, but it's a, a matte finish where there's no glare. In this country, cedar is by far 
a material that will last and last and last so that the lasting effect of the building and the, the materials that use is natural cedar. Even the outside are cedar shakes. Today to replace that roof alone would be probably somewhere in the neighborhood of $200,000. Uh, cedar singles of the type, type that were put on here will last about anywhere between 75 and 90 years. He uses a lot of natural products, like the altar, for instance, is, is Tyndall stone. Uh, from northern Man from the, from the Tyndall area, just north here, and uh, it's an imposing block. Obviously, you wouldn't want to move it. Uh, the um, the figures of Christ and uh, Mary, the mother, and the uh, way of the cross are all sculpted wood, and that comes from Quebec. The capacity of the church uh, is very near the 500 mark. It doesn't appear to be that way, but it's just under 500 people. And it's, a, it's communal and it's down to earth. And that is one of the aspects of this round church where, where everybody, there isn't a bad, you're right, there isn't a bad seat in the house and it's communal, everybody around the altar. And that's the way it was designed. It's a wonderful church to pray in, really. It, uh, it brings you that closer to, uh, to our Lord, and this is, this is the purpose. The Architectural Association of Canada named 20 different sites of architectural importance to Canada. Manitoba has two of those sites. This church is one of them. 